Hey guys, Agro Ninja here, and welcome back to some more Enit Matica 8. In this episode, we build a foundry. And then we're gonna place our foundry controller right here. Go on a rabbit hunt and rabbit foot. Slay the dragon. Free the end. Accomplished. Bye bye, dragon. Get some XP. And have a lot of fun diving back into industrial foregoing. Today, we are going to be taking a much needed break from Batania. Don't get me wrong, I love Batania and it's been a lot of fun, but I feel like the last couple of episodes have been a bit of a Batania overload. <laughs> so we're going to take a break and we're going to work on some other stuff today. And what I've came up with looking through the quest book and things that we need to move over from our starter base that are getting kind of annoying is two primary things. One is we really only halfway finished Tinker's Construct. So we're going to use this floor and we're going to set up the few remaining items from Tinker's Construct we didn't build over here and provide a setup in case we need to modify any of our tools or create any additional Tinker's tools. The other thing is we barely scratched the surface of industrial foregoing. So I want to start diving back into that mod. But if we take a quick look at the Tinker's Construct quest line here, because this is where we're going to get started. You can see there's several items we haven't crafted. The primary thing that we haven't set up from the mod is this foundry and this alloyer. Now these are the scorched versions of the more basic smeltery controller. So this mod has really evolved a lot over the years. It used to be just the basic smeltery and that was it. And it has grown into quite the mod. There's also some cool items over here I was looking at that we can craft. But today, I would like to craft all of this. Some of this stuff, like the tools and the weapons, we don't need any of this, but we want to finish out this quest line. As far as Industrial 4 going, we're not even gonna take a look at the quest book there, because that's not my focus. My focus for that today is to get the processes that we've already set up in our starter base moved over to here. And when I say moved, we're not actually gonna be moving any of the machines. We're just going to take those setups and probably expand them and automate them into our system. So we're gonna have a little fun today. <laughs> but to get started, we need to get this room decorated. Thank you. 
we got our decorating done. And I think it turned out pretty good. It mirrors the floors up above. So we widen this hole here where we go up and down with our jetpack. So it matches these top two floors instead of this bottom floor. We've also added one of our fake walls so we can add some additional machines if needed. Over here, we did add one of our wall setups for machines as well. So we have plenty of extra space for new machines. We've got some glowstone lighting like we've been doing. And we added this stairwell over here since the ceiling's a little different level. And I just think it makes a really nice touch. We got the beam running across, so then we got some stairs. Definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think. Obviously, we trimmed everything out with our polished blackstone, which makes the floors look really nice. And we've got some of our railing we've added in. Over here, I've left a spot open where we're going to put a big old foundry. And I have everything we need in our inventory. We can just take a look at that real quick to put one of these together. So let's go ahead and start laying some blocks out. The first thing we're doing here is laying the floor down. And unlike the smeltery, the foundry actually needs to be a square. It can't be, it can't have hollow sides in the corners where with a with smeltery you could leave this block out because it's not part of the interior. But with a foundry, you actually have to fill all that in. And we're just gonna take this up one more level all the way around. And then we're going to place our foundry controller right here. And we're going to put our tank on, you know what? Let's actually put this right here. <laughs> and then over here, we'll put our tank. And then we're going to put one of our drains here and the other drain right here. And now we can finish laying out all this brick. Scorched glass, we're going to stick this on this side so we can see into the foundry. I don't know how much we'll actually use this. And we probably definitely didn't need one this big, <laughs> but we went ahead and made one. I think it fits nice in this corner. And I believe I have some blackstone still. I was gonna trim this out around the edges. Yeah. And now our glowstone lighting lines up really nicely. Let's add some of the corner ones. I love this exchanger. I use this more than any tool I have when it comes to building. Um, hmm. All right, now we should have some components here stacked around it. So we're gonna stick a cast there and then the basin on these. And then we should have three faucets. And we have what I believe is a function foundry. I have not used one of these before. I know there's some better fuels that you can use with this. We're gonna have to look into that a bit more so I'm going to look at a way of filling it with what we have access to now. And then we're going to burn through some of these crafts that of items for the quest line that we don't need. And speaking of the quest line, let's go ahead and finish off some of these quests we just done. So we built this book, the Fantastic Foundry, which is a guide for this part of the mod. We also built the Nether Grout, which is the component needed to make the bricks for all of these foundry components and it's soul sand magma cream and a gravel and it crafts two so we'll go ahead and accept the rewards for that and then of course we have our foundry controller which is all the components we just put together plus some <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take the reward for that and then we also have the components for this Scorched Alloyer. I almost forgot about this. Let's go ahead and set that up as well. Let's clear our inventory. And just based off what it requires, I don't know if this is enough items, but I believe we can just plop our Alloyer right there. And then ingot tank on each side. And then we should have a 
fuel tank we can put down below it. And I believe it could function like this. I could be wrong. And I think you could come out the front with the faucet, but it may actually need a drain as well. I'll have to look into this a little bit. The book wasn't very clear. If we grab the book and we go into this, you can see it just shows, well, just like we have it set up, but it also shows it with a spout on each one of these. So you might be able to pull out of that. We'll just have to see. Ooh. But now let's go ahead and burn through some of this quest line of items that we don't need and get our foundry fueled. So we've been quite busy. You'll notice that we've redecorated our foundry with some additional blocks, and I think it makes it look a lot nicer. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Over here on the wall, you'll see where we've added some additional items. Part of this was quests, and part of it was just blocks that we needed to make other blocks for quests. <laughs> you'll see we've got some leftover components and tools, things that we'll probably never use. We did build this cast chest, which was a quest, and we filled it up with one of each type of gold cast. As we were working through quests, we put all the stuff in this chest for the most part. Now, if we take a look at the quest book itself, you'll see that there's a few things unfinished. And we'll take a look at those real quick before we 
accept all the quest rewards for these quests. A couple of the key ones were these Tinker Shoes. They require a rabbit's foot. Something we're going to have to go hunting for. We don't have one. Another one was the Tinker's Cake. We did make one, and I thought it was one of those situations where if we make one, it gave us reward. But it actually wants us to make one of each. And we're going to have to go around to the various slime islands while we're hunting for a rabbit's foot and get some of the tall grass or crimson root in this case, and a blood of each type of slime that is available in the game to make each one of these cakes. Hopefully we could get that knocked out today. We'll see. Another is the blazing blood. And this one isn't too bad. We're just gonna have to go farm some blaze heads and we'll look at how we're gonna do that in just a moment. But if, you, if we take a look at this blazing blood, you can see you can get it by killing a blaze. You can also get it by cooking the heads, uh, which will give you 100 millibuckets. So if we can get, I think, 10 heads, we can get one bucket. And the last one, and possibly the hardest, not really the hardest, but I'm going to have to reset our end because we've already killed the dragon, is this Blast the Dragon. And this requires dragon scales. And you get dragon scales by damaging the dragon with explosives. <laughs> so that one we may end the episode with, which will also wrap up Tinkers, if we can get these other things knocked out. But before we go on a hunt for a rabbit's foot and a bunch of random slime blocks, we're gonna head downstairs to our platform. In between working on the clips for this next episode, I had a stream on Twitch and we built a really nice bee habitat. So let's go down and take a look at that. As you can see, we copied our design from our Batania dome over to another dome right next to it. And we've connected them right in the middle. And when if we go through our Batania dome, which is how we'll get to it, we can take a quick look and see what we've done. I think this has turned out really good and I'm really excited to see what you guys think. We have a double glass pane here so the bees can't get out. And like I said, it's the same core design, but instead of a bunch of Batania stuff in the corners, we have eight beehives on each side. And we've added all kinds of little decorative pieces and flowers for them to eat. We got all this foliage. I just think it looks fantastic. <laughs> we put a lot of work in this. And when I say we, me and my buddy, we worked on this during our stream and it turned out quite nice. It took us a couple of hours to do all this from, from start to finish. And on the bottom of all of these bee nests, there is a hive hopper. And it, if I place this down, you can see what it does. It automatically pulls out any honeycomb and honey. And we have an import bus on each one of those pulling everything into our applied energistic system. So if we go and take a look and look up honey, you'll see we already have 60 buckets of honey and almost 600 honeycomb. So we've definitely got a plan for this. That's why I wanted to set this farm up. And also, I just like these little nature areas like this, especially bees. We have a whole bunch of bees, like they're coming out. Oh, look at them, they're so cute. We got some that are like rainbow colored. They're really cool looking. But we're going to uh, go on a hunt for a rabbit's foot and a whole bunch of slime blocks. But before we do that, I guess I should show you how we're doing that. So we did craft two new tools with our Tinker setup. I got a little carried away. And we made two because the first one, I did not put luck on it. So it has Severing 5, at three levels of Sharp, is Necrotic, and Fiery 2. It's a pretty good sword. <laughs> and our other one is very similar. It just has luckier instead of ne uh, necrotic and, and fiery um, and ha and it's severing five as well and three levels of sharpness well these are really great swords so we'll probably use this one the most and they're made out of steel and rose gold and invar that was the materials that i went for that was the best that i had to use at the moment but i just saw our one minute warning on our server so as soon as our server restarts we are gonna go look for a rabbit's foot and some slime blocks. 
Rabbit's foot. And rabbit's foot. And rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Come on. Oh, and we have a rabbit's foot. That took a while. <laughs> oh my goodness. I not believe how hard it was for me to find rabbits. I had to use the nature's compass to find deserts. And I went through about five different deserts. And it took almost 10 different rabbits before we finally got a rabbit's foot. We also knocked out our slime islands, which weren't bad at all. And we got our 10 blaze heads. And while we were at it, we went ahead and grabbed three Wither Skeleton Skulls. So we should be able to finish up everything in this quest line except for the Dragon Scales. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I've got the slime ready to go for our Tinker's Boots. So we're going to put the rabbit foot right there. And then we're going to click it with the slime. It should be filling in. Did we not do enough? Let's take a look at our quest book and see what we're messing up. Oh, it needs to go in through the cast, the big one, not the little one. So we'll put that right there. And then right click our scorched faucet. And it should start filling in. We may not have enough now. There it goes. Nope, it's running. It's just really, really slow. It should take all of that slime. And we now have and we now have Tinker's boots. Boots that we'll <laughs> never use. <laughs> All right, if we go back to our quest book, we can start working on our cakes. And before we do that, we're actually going to take our 10 blaze heads and we're going to throw them in our smeltery and let them melt down. And while that is cooking, we're going to go into our crafting terminal. We're going to look up cake. And we already have the earth slime one, so let's do the sky slime cake. Let's do the blood cake. Uh oh, missing some glowstone. Oh, so we should have. Do we not have any? Um, let's try just doing. Uh, might be out of. 
Oh, we are out of glowstone. We're going to have to fix that. <laughs> uh, but let's go back to Kate. That is a problem for future aggro ninja. <laughs> so there is our blood cake. And now for the ender slime cake. And the magma cake. Whew. It took me a little while to find all that, but it wasn't as bad as the rabbits. Out of all of this stuff, the rabbit foot was the worst. Now we should have one bucket of blazing blood. And I think I'm out of buckets, but that's okay. We can make more. Actually, no, we should have some empty ones now. And we will bucket that out. And that should be all quests completed except for the dragon scale. So why don't we go ahead and clean out our inventory before we do anything. Let's put these cakes over here, the boot, uh, our sword. Um, we'll just put everything right here and we'll get it back out here in just a moment. The reason I'm doing that is because we're about to complete all these quests and it's going to be a ton of rewards. So let's knock this out. Now that we got our inventory sorted out, there's one last thing I want to look at before we start moving some of our industrial foregoing stuff over. And I completely forgot about it. It's been sitting in my inventory, but I discovered these EFLNs from Tinker's Construct, and it says explode, safe for mining. <laughs> I've already played with these, so let's teleport somewhere safe, and I'm going to show you what these things do. All right, so we're in a random spot in the nether and I'm just gonna throw one of these out just so you can see what it does. Boom! It does quite a bit of damage. So what I'm thinking, these are really easy to make. We'll look it up real quick just so you can see. But it's essentially four gunpowder and one piece of flint. I'm thinking we can make a whole bunch of these and we can reset the end and use these to get our dragon scales. And that will pretty much wrap up our Tinker's Construct quest line. I don't know if we'll get to that in today's episode, but definitely in the next one. Uh, Cause I'll probably coordinate with my friends where I can reset the end and we can go and have some fun. Uh, I will make a note. I meant to go over this earlier, but with the Tinker's Construct quest line, there is an issue and I've already let the mod pack developer know but this is not completable. So we won't get the pretty little ding that we completed the quest line because this is not in the game. There's nothing for inlay gold cast. This is hopefully gonna get removed and then we will be able to finish this quest line. <laughs> but it isn't an issue at the moment because we still need to get dragon scales. But let's get our latex processing set back up over at our mega base.
Well, we have started back down the rabbit hole that is industrial foregoing. <laughs> We've brought over our latex processing setup and expanded it by one section. It's also integrated into our plant energistic system. So we have an export bus that is keeping our block placer full, which is of course placing the logs. And on each one of the fluid extractors, we have an import bus, which is pulling all of the latex into our applied energistic system. All of the fluid extractors are upgraded with tier two speed processing and efficiency upgrades. And this is still not producing quite enough latex to keep up with our latex processor. So we're going to shift all this down three blocks and add one more section down here on the end. And hopefully that will be enough to give us a little bit of excess latex. I don't know what the conversion is that you need to match the latex processing with tier two upgrades, but this is not enough. <laughs> it currently isn't running because we sucked up all the water we had in our system. So water is not currently interfaced with our applied energistic system. So in between episodes, I will work on doing that. I'm also gonna work on optimizing this and expanding this setup a little bit. I just wanted to get it together. This episode is taking me probably longer than any episode has, primarily because it took me like three hours to find a rabbit's foot. But we also have a fluid encapsulator, getting back to you going over what we've been working on with industrial foregoing. And this is from Thermal Series, and we're feeding it latex, and it is fully upgraded. Essentially, we have a pattern in here that says, if we want a bucket of latex to send this machine a bucket, and it'll fill that bucket up with latex. We're also gonna do this for water buckets, but I don't have that set up at the moment. And we've added 10 dissolution chambers, and each one of these are gonna be dedicated to crafting a certain item. And this probably isn't enough, but it's enough to get us started. And we have set some of these up already. I'll set some more up in between episodes. But on this one, we're producing uh, the add-on that expands an area by four. I forget what that's called. We'll go look at the pattern. Range upgrade, <laughs> tier four. Uh, the rest of these are producing these tier two add-ons, efficiency, speed, and processing. So I'm not sure which one's which, but essentially there's a pattern provider on the left side of each one of these machines. It sends it the parts. Their inputs are locked, so to go back into the right places. We have an export bus keeping the machine full of latex. You also have to go in here on fluid input and set it to disable where you have your import bus at. Otherwise your fluid will just, it'll just make a loop. So I did discover that. Same thing with this. I've got these blocked. So the water and the latex is blocked and over here it's blocked as well. So, well actually on here I'm, I'm filtering the import bus. I'm just only allowing a bucket of latex. That's how I've done this one. Uh, but we got a little bit more of cable optimization and to set up some additional auto crafts for some more industrial foregoing stuff. But we didn't really make any forward progress with industrial foregoing. We're just bringing over our setup so we can actually use it in our mega base. So going into the next episode, I've got some serious industrial foregoing plans. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit different, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap up by heading to the end and slaying the dragon one more time. <laughs> well, I got a couple of my friends together and we decided to respawn the dragon. So let's go ahead and get the dragon back in the world. And I believe this is how you do it. In crystal there, in crystal there, in crystal there, and then one in crystal there. And it should respawn. And this does take a moment, I believe. And we're almost all the way around. And hopefully somebody brought some arrows because I did not.
If we wait for him to land down by here, we can hit him with the Elfins. Because he does have that sequence where he lands on the portal. Which he's getting ready to do now, I think. About to find out. I'm throwing mine. We'll split the dragon skills later. I, I see them coming off. I'm out, I'm out. I've got four of them already. I'm gonna start hitting him with my sword. Yeah, I didn't have my magnet turned on. Where'd he go, where'd he go? All right, that's it, let me, let me finish him. Oh my goodness, he's doing like, he's like knocking me back. There, boom. Breathing in, accomplished. Bye bye dragon, get some XP. We should now have plenty of dragon scale. We also was able to pick up the previous dragon egg and we grabbed the dragon head. <laughs> so if we go into our quest book, we can go ahead. Oh, I forgot about that. This will unlock challenges, which is a missing item. But anyways, we can now work on in-game challenges at some point. Uh, but if we go to Tinker's Construct, we now have the dragon scale. <laughs> so we were able to get everything done we could in today's episode, which is a pretty huge accomplishment. This actually took quite a while. I'm just waiting for them to update the pack. I've already made the person who manages the quest book aware that this is broken. So hopefully this will get fixed soon and we'll come back and finish this quest line up. It does look like we got one more thing under storage and it looks like it's for our foundry controller. So now that we've knocked that out, there's one last thing I wanna show you guys that we've set up. And then before we head down and look at that, there's actually two things. I've, I've set up a cell workbench and I've also set up an MEIO port. And we can use this to drain different types of disks into our system. So if we have something we don't want to use, we can we can drain it over and then that then we can get rid of that drive or break it down and turn it into something else. And this is used to partition drive so you can lock what goes on it. And if we head down to where we have all our storage cells, I'll show you what we use that for. What I've done is I have locked a drive to just water or partitioned it, I should say. So now only water will go on this drive. And I've done that for latex as well as honey. And as we introduce new fluids into our system, we can control how much that we generate, especially water, because we don't want, want water filling up our entire storage system and we can't get anything else in there. So now it can only go on to this drive. And once it's full, it won't accept any more water unless we put unpartitioned drives in here, which I don't plan to do or fluids. <laughs> but that is pretty much all we're gonna get to today. I can't wait to get started editing this one because it's gonna be interesting. It was a little different than normal, but let's go ahead and wrap today's up. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. This is Agro Ninja and that's a wrap.